Panthers are cool, but what are they doing on Tatooine? Let's explore. Hey friends, welcome back to the Nerdy Naturalist channel, where we explore the biology of nerd culture. I was watching Star Wars, and being the biologist I am, I'm always marveling at the funky creatures in that galaxy far, far away. And I started thinking about banthas, you know, those big hairy creatures the Tusken Raiders ride on? I'm watching these big hairy animals roaming around on the desert planet Tatooine and I'm thinking, this doesn't make sense. Why would banthas exist on Tatooine? Let's think about this. Tatooine is a desert planet. Its two suns contribute to the planet being very arid and bright. It doesn't seem like the kind of place for a big, hairy, lumbering animal. Looking at banthas, what animals on earth do they look like? My first answer would be the woolly mammoth, because of their size, those tusks, and all that hair. From the Ice Age movies, we may associate woolly mammoths with cold, snowy weather, and the truth is, the northern variety of the woolly mammoths found in North America had adaptations for cold weather, like coarse hair and reduced ears, as compared to its closest extant relative, the Asian elephant, in order to reduce the chance of frostbite. The similarities between banthas and woolly mammoths would suggest that they are adapted to the same environments, but the environments of Tatooine and the cooler environments woolly mammoths are found in are very different. All the hair in the banthas doesn't make sense for desert environments, as I imagine they get overheated. In their first canon experience, A New Hope, all the banthas were played by the same animal actor, Margie, a 22-year-old Asian elephant. If banthas are anything like elephants, their preferred habitat would be savannas, forests, and grasslands, where they have access to water almost daily, not necessarily the desert. There are rare groups of elephants that seem to persist in the desert environments of North Mali and also in the Namib Desert, where they only have access to seasonal rivers and scant vegetation for sustenance. They can survive multiple days without water and have been observed to dig their own wells in riverbeds. They use their large ears to flap and stay cool. Banthas don't have this advantage. Also, and again, I just can't get over how hot the banthas must be under all that fur. Given the fact that banthas are covered in hair, one would assume they are like mammals. After all, the four main features of mammals are found on banthas. They are hair, large brains, which is clear based on the banthas head size, mammary glands, which anyone who's a hardcore fan knows that banthas produce blue milk, and lastly, differentiated teeth, which means the teeth are multiple shapes. Are mammals common in deserts? You bet! There's actually a wide variety of mammals, from small ones like round-tailed ground squirrels, jackrabbits and kit foxes, to larger ones like coyotes, cougars, and bighorn sheep. Those curled horns on the bighorns are similar to what we see on panthas. On the bighorn sheep, the horns can get up to 3 feet long and up to 30 pounds. They use these horns for, as tools for eating and fighting. Perhaps banthas do the same, but their horns are much heavier. Poor banthas. When thinking about mammals surviving in the desert, we really should look no further than camels, and perhaps the answer to how banthas survive on Tatooine is in the camel. Camels have multiple ways of coping with the desert life, like having leathery pads to protect their feet, knees, and elbows from the hot sand. Camels are also able to survive the long walks across the desert without food or water by utilizing the energy-rich fat stored in their humps. Perhaps the large body of the bantha allows for plenty of fat storage, which they can rely on for their food, water, and energy needs. In another explanation for banthas, perhaps they are survivors of a different world before. In Star Wars lore, Tatooine wasn't always a desert planet. Long before the time of Luke Skywalker, it was a planet covered in oceans and rainforests. Perhaps banthas are survivors from that period. Banthas were bred on other planets as well. Perhaps they were brought to Tatooine lacking any coevolution with the planet's climate and ecosystems. Either way, I'm glad they are there. They're cool to look at, and Boba looked really cool riding on one in the Book of Boba Fett. I'm biologist Dr. Pat Danishkar, and if you enjoyed this video, press like. And if you want more examination of pop culture, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.